Hello and welcome to my channel. Uh, don't quite know how you found it, but you did. I've been contemplating starting a uh, YouTube channel for several years just to give my opinion on various topics. And I've decided why wait any further. It's February 1st, 2017. So this is the first audio commentary and the first video. Okay. Um, This uh, topic that I'm going to go ahead and start because there's a lot of things going on in the world right now. You have a Muslim ban of, well, not a Muslim ban, but a ban of seven countries that are primarily Muslim in its origin. It's Super Bowl, Super Bowl week. Um, weather's crazy. You got Groundhog Day, so you got a whole bunch of stuff going on. But anyway, this first subject is going to be based on something dealing with sports and Super Bowl week. Um, there's a lot of etymology by, behind the word Super Bowl because it can be broken up to say many different things. It could be it could be said superb aisle. It could do many different things. So when you're watching something, you got to be careful what you're watching. I won't be watching it, but I have my reasons. I won't watch any of it. Um, but to each its own. However, uh, the Super Bowl is being played between New England Patriots and the Atlanta Falcons. Um, you know, the Falcon is the eye of Horus, and Horus was a winged wing thing, but. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and just continue with my ideas. Super Bowl was already set up. You're thinking you're watching something that's not scripted, but it's totally, totally designed to do what it wants to do. Um, as far as predicting it, I'm not going to attempt to predict it. Um, I don't really necessarily agree to the perspective of predicting things, you know, going forward, even though I think some people really truly have that ability. I think it it's misused when you can predict things. Um, it's kind of much well, cheating, but it's it's misused often. Nevertheless, uh, New England is playing Atlanta, and the week before, New England played Pittsburgh. So that's really the topic of this video. So if you stayed this long, and I didn't weed you out, now I'm gonna tell you what's really happening. Pittsburgh's most valuable player or the most important player on their team. Some say it's Ben Roethlisberger. I believe it's Le'Veon Bell. Uh, Le'Veon Bell has a history of, um, you know, suspensions in the league dealing with uh, his use of marijuana, which, you know, the league might want to be a little bit more lenient on. But in previous years, well, previously he had got suspended for four games for violating the league's substance abuse policy. Then... Uh, the following year, um, he got caught again violating the league's substance abuse policy, which would be this year, 2016 season, 2016-17. And he was suspended for four games again. However, they reduced it to three games this year. More on that later. All right. Le'Veon Bell, when he played against New England, they said in all the news uh, breakdowns that he was nursing uh, a groin injury, which you know they they put that stuff out in the in the information as far as on the um, the media and the wire that you know he's nursing a a, gro a groin injury or whatever it was, so he's nursing a groin injury. All right, but if he's nursing a groin injury, chances are it's been a nagging injury or injury that's been continuing for quite some time or it happened really suddenly now being a sports fan or a recovering sports addict I, re I recall that when they played against Kansas City Le'Veon Bell had 30 carries for well over 150 60 yards whatever it was he had over 30 carries 30 carries on a bad growing I don't really believe that so if he carried the ball 30 times the week before he played New England on a bad groin, 
And then all of a sudden, the week that they played New England, he has a bad groin. When did it happen? In practice? No. He's the most valuable player. They're not going to put him in a situation where he can re-hurt his groin or injure it. All right. So, he plays against New England. Early in the game, when the game is really in doubt, he aggravates his groin. In the the media and actually in the interview of him dealing with his injury, he stated, and I'll try to put a link up to where it is. He stated that he tried to go, I'm paraphrasing, he tried to go, but it was something about that tackle that was weird. Something about that tackle that was weird. So a guy who has been tackled hundreds of times, all of a sudden says a tackle is weird. Hmm. And there's no recordings and there's no video of that tackle. You can look all over the internet. One of the, one of the best running backs and arguably the team's most valuable player. When he got hurt, there's no video of it on the internet. None. But there are videos of him being hurt three months ago and last year, but there's no video of that game. Now, that tackle, the tackle that he experienced was really, really questionable because I believe the person who tackled him had a loaded glove based on the fact that he said it was something about that tackle that was weird. I wouldn't necessarily be inclined to believe that, but New England has a history of cheating. They can't help themselves. They cannot help themselves. So, if a guy would deflate the balls during the Super Bowl or the week prior to the Super Bowl or whatever, they'll definitely use a loaded glove to punch a guy in the balls to give him an electrical shock where he can be on the bench looking puzzled thinking to himself, what in the hell happened to me? Why do I feel like I feel? That's the first That's the first option. The second option is Le'Veon Bell was suspended for only three games when the league originally suspended him for four games. Perhaps that was the fourth game. It's up to you. But I'm almost 100% sure, without telling people this, that New England is going to do something to get Julio Jones out of that game. And I could be wrong, but I'm almost certain that something would be done to get Julio Jones out of the game because he plays in the same aspect like Le'Veon Bell. can't be so obvious to do something to Matt Ryan. You have to do something to technically the best player on the team that can affect the energy of the team. So I believe Julio Jones will be targeted for some particular reason or some way. And I believe that because this needs to be Tom's Tom Brady's last game. If he's going to go out as the greatest quarterback to ever play, this is how it's designed. If he loses this game, he has to play another year. They already have tried to groom the last guy for four games. But if he loses this game, he has to continue to play. He's the type of player, he can't lose the Super Bowl and retire. He wouldn't do that. So, it's looking like New England is going to win. And I'll continue part two of this video on the other side because there's more to it than just Le'Veon Bell being hit with a loaded glove the week before. Something else happened this week, but that'll be in part two. Thanks.